The Battle of Croesus was a battle fought in 392 BC in the course of the Sicilian Wars, between the Carthaginian army under Mago and a Greek army under Dionysius I, tyrant of Syracuse, who was aided by Agiris, tyrant of the Sicil city of Agirium. Mago had been defeated by Dionysius at Abacoinum in 393, which had not damaged the Carthaginian position in Sicily. Reinforced by Carthage in 392, Mago moved, to attack the Sicils allied with Syracuse in central Sicily. After the Carthaginians reached and encamped near the river Croesus, the Sicils harassed the Carthaginian supply lines causing a supply shortage, while the Greek soldiers rebelled and deserted Dionysius when he refused to fight a pitched battle. Both Mago and Dionysius agreed to a peace treaty, which allowed the Carthaginians to formally occupy the area west of the river Halicus, while Dionysius was given lordship over the Sicil lands. The peace would last until 383, when Dionysius attacked the Carthaginians again. Chapter 1 Background Dionysius attacked the Phoenician city of Motia in 398 BC, igniting the first of four wars he was to lead against Carthage between 398 to 368. After the sack of Motia, Dionysius retired to Syracuse, while Himilco of Carthage arrived in Sicily with 50,000 men along with 400 triremes and 600 transports to continue the war. In 397. Himilco first stormed Motia, where the mostly Sicil garrison under Bitten was easily overcome, then lifted the siege of Segesta, and Dionysius retired to Syracuse instead of offering battle in western Sicily against a superior army. Himilco returned to Panormus, garrisoned the Carthaginian territories, and then sailed to Lipera and collected thirty talents of silver as tribute. The Carthaginian force next sailed for Messana, and easily captured and sacked the city. Himilco founded the city of Tauromenium and populated it with allied Sicils, then moved south towards Catina. Dionysius moved his forces to Catina also but, due to the rash tactics of his brother Leptins, the Greek fleet was heavily defeated at the naval battle of Catina. Himilco next besieged Syracuse itself in the autumn of 397. After the Carthaginian forces were devastated by a plague, Dionysius managed to decimate the Punic fleet and shut up the army survivors in their camp. Himilco, after bribing Dionysius, fled to Africa with Carthaginian citizens, while Dionysius enslaved the abandoned Carthaginian soldiers. Chapter 2 Sicily during 396 to 392 BC the Sicilian Greek cities which had become tributary to Carthage after 405 had all revolted in 398, and along with the Sicils and the Sicans had joined Dionysius in his attack against Motia. After the defeat at Catana the Sicilian Greek soldiers had returned to their respective homes when Dionysius decided to withstand a siege in Syracuse against their wishes. The Sicils had also turned against Dionysius and had sent soldiers to help Himilco during the Carthaginian siege of Syracuse in 397 BC. Chapter 2 Section 1 – Carthaginian Problems The return of Himilco after abandoning his troops to the mercy of Dionysius did not sit well with either the Carthaginian citizenry or their African subjects. Himilco publicly took full responsibility for the debacle, dressed in rags visited all the temples of the city pleading for deliverance and finally committed suicide. The divine was not mollified as a plague swept through Africa weakening Carthage further, and to top things off, the Libyans, angered by the desertion of their kinsmen in Sicily, gathered in an army numbering 70,000 men, and besieged Carthage itself. Mago, the victor of Catana, took command. The standing Punic army was in Sicily and recruiting a new one would have been time-consuming and probably very costly, so he rallied Carthaginian citizens to man the walls while the Punic navy kept the city supplied, as the Libyans had no ships to counter the Carthaginian fleet. Mago then used bribes and other means to quell the rebels. Chapter 2 Section 1 Subsection 2 Mago in Sicily After securing the safety of Carthage, Mago moved to Sicily, where the Punic city of Solus had been sacked by Dionysius sometime in 396 BC. 
Carthage was unwilling or unable to provide Mago with additional forces, and he had to make do with the Punic garrison left by Himilco and whatever forces he could gather in Sicily. The Carthaginians caught a break when Dionysius chose not to invade the Punic territories in western Sicily immediately lifting the siege of Syracuse. The Elymians had stayed loyal to Carthage since the start of the war, while the Sicilian Greeks and Sicans were not threatening, and most of the Sicils were not hostile when Mago arrived in Sicily. Instead of trying to recover the lost Punic conquests through force, Mago adopted a policy of cooperation and friendship, giving aid to Greeks, Sicans, Sicils, Elymians and Punics regardless of their prior standing with Carthage. Many of the Greeks had been victims of the duplicity and aggression of Dionysius and even preferred to live under Punic rule. The Carthaginians allowed Greeks from Naxos, Catana, and Leontini, made refugees by Dionysius, along with Sicils and Sicans to settle in Punic territory, while alliances were made with Sicil tribes being threatened by Dionysius. The Greek cities, free of Carthaginian overlordship since 398, now moved from a pro-Syracuse position to a neutral one, either feeling threatened by Dionysius or because of the activities of Mago. Mago was forced to take up arms after Dionysius attacked Tauromenium in 394, a Carthaginian alley. Chapter 2 Section 2, Syracuse, Dionysius Secures Position Dionysius did not immediately attack Punic Sicily after lifting the siege of Syracuse in 396, although no formal treaty had been made ending the war with Carthage. The war had been costly and he may have been short of money, he also had to deal with a revolt of his mercenaries, and furthermore, he feared a fight to the finish with Carthage as it might end up finishing him. After securing Syracuse and resettling the rebellious mercenaries at Leontini, Dionysius began to secure his position in eastern Sicily. Chapter 2 Section 2 Subsection 2 Resettlement of Greeks in North Sicily The destruction of Messana had left region, a Greek city hostile to Dionysius, in a position to dominate the Strait of Messina, and Carthage with an opportunity to join hands with region and threaten Syracuse from the north. Dionysius first rebuilt and repopulated Messina with colonists from Locri and Medma from Italy and some from Messini, who were later relocated to Tyndarus when Sparta objected to settling the Messinians in Messana. The original inhabitants of Messana, homeless since the sack of their city in 397, were settled at Tyndarus, another city built by Dionysius after he forced the Sicil city of Abacoinum to cede lands to the new colony. The founding of Messana, and Tynaris helped secure the northeastern coast of Sicily for Dionysius. Region, fearing Dionysius might use Messana as a base against them planted Mile between Messana, and Tynaris and populated the city with the refugees of Naxos and Catana, however, in 394 BC the Messanians defeated a region attack on Messana and took Mile. Chapter 3, Sicil Campaigns after settling Messana Dionysius attacked the Sicils and took Smilius and Morgantina, around which the Punic city Solus and Sicil city Cephaloidium was betrayed to him, the Sicil town of Enna was sacked and the booty fattened his coffers. Syracusan territory by now had expanded to border Agirium. Chapter 3 Section 1, Sicil Allies Agiris, tyrant of Agirium was a ruthless man, having become rich after killing the leading citizens of Agirium, commanded 20,000 citizens and many fortresses, and was second only to Dionysius in Sicily. Furthermore, Agiris had aided the Campanian mercenaries sent by Carthage to rescue Dionysius in 403, so Dionysius had a personal debt to consider. Dionysius chose not to provoke Agiris or Daemon, ruler of Centuripi but made alliances with the Sicil cities of Agirium, Centuripi, Herbita, Aceris, and Herbicus. Creating a buffer zone for Syracuse in central Sicily. Dionysius next besieged Tauromenium in the winter, but was forced lift the siege after his night assault failed. Dionysius next attacked region, but his attack failed, and he returned to Sicily after concluding a treaty with region to prevent their joining Carthage. Chapter 3 Section 2 Mago moves in 393. 
It normally took Carthage some time to organize armies, so Mago did not await reinforcements from Africa to arrive. He gathered together whatever forces he could in Sicily and set out for Messana, which had deposed out the partisans of Dionysius after his debacle at Toronimium. Dionysius managed to intercept Mago near Abacoinum, and the Carthaginians were heavily defeated, losing 800 soldiers. The defeat did not weaken the Carthaginian position in Sicily. Carthage reinforced Mago, and the stage was set for another confrontation. Chapter 4 Opposing Forces Himilco had brought 50,000 men along with 400 triremes and 600 transports to Sicily in 397. The majority of this army had been destroyed at Syracuse, and the size of the force Mago commanded at Abacoinum is not known except that it had shrunk by a further 8,000 men after the battle. Carthage sent an army of 80,000 soldiers to Sicily, recruited from Afric Sardinia and Campania. No Iberian recruits are mentioned, perhaps the presence of Iberians at Leontini and in the army of Syracuse had made Carthage wary of hiring them. Carthaginian troop numbers may have been exaggerated by a factor of two, but it is likely Mago's force outnumbered the Greeks. Dionysius had mustered an army of 40,000 foot and 3,000 horsemen, from both citizens and mercenaries for attacking Mochia in 398, perhaps along with 40,000 Greek, Sicil and Sicon volunteers. At Catana in 397 Dionysius commanded 30,000 foot and 3,000 horse, perhaps he was short of cash to hire mercenaries and part of his forces were manning Syracuse. In 392 Dionysius organized an army of 20,000 men, perhaps garrison duty and cash shortage prevented assembling of a larger contingent. The Sicils mustered an army of 20,000 troops to support Syracuse. Chapter 4 Section 1, Carthaginian Cohorts The Libyans supplied both heavy and light infantry and formed the most disciplined units of the army. The heavy infantry fought in close formation, armed with long spears and round shields, wearing helmets and linen cuirasses. The light Libyan infantry carried javelins and a small shield, same as Iberian light infantry. Campanian, Sardinian, Sicil and Gallic infantry fought in their native gear, but often were equipped by Carthage. Sicils and other Sicilians were equipped like Greek hoplites, as were the Sicilian Greek mercenaries. Mago's force had no Iberian soldiers. The Libyans, Carthaginian citizens, and the Libyo-Phoenicians provided disciplined, well-trained cavalry equipped with thrusting spears and round shields. Numidia provided superb light cavalry armed with bundles of javelins and riding without bridle or saddle. Iberians and Gauls also provided cavalry, which relied on the all-out charge. Carthage at this time did not use elephants, and there is no mention of war chariots being present in Mago's army. The Carthaginian officer corps held overall command of the army, although many units may have fought under their chieftains. Chapter 4 Section 2 – Greek Forces The mainstay of the Greek army was the hoplite, drawn mainly from the citizens by Dionysius had a large number of mercenaries from Italy and Greece as well. Sicils and other native Sicilians also served in the army as hoplites and also supplied peltists, and a number of Campanians, probably equipped like Samnite or Etruscan warriors, were present as well. The phalanx was the standard fighting formation of the army. The cavalry was recruited from wealthier citizens and hired mercenaries. Dionysius also had the services of a number of Iberian troops, former members of Himilco's army. The Iberian infantry wore purple bordered white tunics and leather headgear. The heavy infantry fought in a dense phalanx, armed with heavy throwing spears, long body shields, and short thrusting swords. Chapter 5, Campaign of 392 Carthage had launched three major campaigns in Sicily in 409, 406 and 397 and the Punic navy had played a major role in combat, transport, and logistical roles, as all three campaigns had progressed along the coast of Sicily. 
There is no mention of Carthage mobilizing a naval contingent to serve in Sicily in 392, so Mago probably chose an inland route to take on Syracuse. The Carthaginians probably intended to deal with the Sicils allied with Dionysius and not launch a direct attack on Syracuse. The exact route of Mago's march is not known, except that many Sicil cities formerly under Dionysius broke away and declared for Carthage. Mago faced little problems until he reached the territory of Agiris near the river Croesus. Chapter 6 Stalemate The Carthaginian army was probably dependent on supplies from their strongholds and allies, being inland the Punic fleet could not have supplied them. Mago marched in the territory of Agiris, but failed to persuade him to switch sides. The Carthaginians then moved to intercept the Greek army, but Dionysius, heavily outnumbered, fell back and lured the Carthaginians away from Agrium. Chapter 6, Section 1, Fabian Strategy Homilcar Barker during the First Punic War and Quintus Fabius Maximus during the Second had adopted a strategy on encamping near their enemy and constantly skirmishing without engaging in pitched battle. Successive Carthaginian commanders faced similar tactics from the Greeks during their campaign in 406, when the Greeks harassed the Punic supply lines and brought them close to disaster. Dionysius now adopted the same strategy. He encamped with his army but refused battle, while the Carthaginians camped nearby, the Sicils were employed to do the harassment. Chapter 6, Section 1 Subsection 2 Agiris Lends Aid Dionysius visited Agiris and secured his cooperation after promising him extensive territories, and to supply whatever he needed in future. Agiris sent supplies of corn and other essentials to the Greek camp, then joined Dionysius with his whole army. The Carthaginian army outnumbered the combined armies of Syracuse and Agrium, so the Greeks sat tight while the Sicils began to harass the Punic supply train and foragers. Constant ambushes and skirmishing followed, and the Sicils, operating in their home ground, got the better of things and soon the Carthaginians faced a supply shortage. However, Fabian strategy is time-consuming, and that in itself can create fatal drawbacks, as Fabius and Homilcar would discover in the future and Dionysius discovered at Croesus. Chapter 6, Section 1 Subsection 3 Dionysius Deserted Greek commanders had put the Carthaginians in similar situations at Akragas and Gela only to have their schemes scuttled by other factors. Like the plague that derailed Carthaginians' campaigns in Sicily, Dionysius often was beset by mutiny and desertion. Sicilian Greeks left his army after his retreat from Gela in 405 BC and from Catana in 397. Syracusan soldiers had mutinied in 405 and 403 BC and almost toppled him, his mercenaries mutinied after his victory at Syracuse in 396 BC. While mercenaries fought as long as they got paid, Greek citizen soldiers liked short campaigns. When Dionysius refused to heed their call for battle and decided to persist with the guerrilla tactics, the Syracusans simply left his camp and went home. Chapter 7, Mutual Discomfort and Peace Dionysius made up his depleted numbers by freeing the slaves of the departed Greeks and arming them, but his army had shrunk both in numbers and fighting quality. It is not known if Mago got wind of his predicament or why he took no action. Dionysius had to cope with the possibility of a Carthaginian attack and also possible betrayal by the Sicils, victims of many a Greek scheme in the past. Mago had three options, sue for peace, retreat or fight a pitched battle. With both parties seeking a way out of their predicaments without battle, peace negotiations were opened and concluded. Chapter 7 Section 1, Reworking the 405 Treaty Himilco and Dionysius had concluded a peace treaty in 405 after the Carthaginians had sacked Akragas, Gela, and Camarina, with only the plague stopping them from attacking Syracuse. The terms of that treaty were. Carthage kept full control of the Phoenician cities in Sicily. Elymian and Sicon cities were put in Carthaginian sphere of influence. Greeks were allowed to return to Selinus, Akragas, Camarina, 
and Gela. These cities, including the new city of Termai, paid tribute to Carthage. Gela and Camerino were forbidden to repair their walls. The Sicils and Messini were to remain free of Carthaginian and Syracusan influence, as was Leontini. Dionysius was confirmed as ruler of Syracuse. Both sides agreed to release prisoners and ships captured during the campaign. The Sicilian political situation in 392 had changed considerably. Carthage was in control of Phoenicians, Secans, and Elymians, but the tributary Greek cities had become independent of Carthaginian control. Dionysius had occupied Leontini while Messini was allied with Syracuse. The Sicils were divided, some were under Greek occupation or allied with Dionysius, while others, especially Tauromenium, was allied with Carthage. Dionysius and Mago agreed to terms, which are not clearly known but which reflected the ground reality. The Sicils became subjects of Dionysius. Which meant Dionysius was free to attack Tauromenium without Carthaginian interference. The Carthaginian dominion reached the rivers Halicas and Himera, the Greek cities of Selinus, Termai and part of the Acragon territory was now Carthaginian. Over a third of Sicily was under the direct control of Carthage. Carthage further retained control over the Phoenicians, Elymians, and Secans. If anything was agreed regarding the status of Acragas, Gela, Camarina, the former vassals of Carthage, it is not known, but Carthage did not try to recover their former vassals. Chapter 7 Section 1 Subsection 2 Reasons for Peace Although both Mago, and Dionysius were in a jam at Croesus, it was probably possible for them to disengage and continue the war. However, the following factors may have influenced their agreeing to the peace pact. Unlike the Roman Republic, which always fought to achieve a favorable outcome, with treaties seen as temporary interludes, the Carthaginians were mostly willing to negotiate, and abide by treaties as long as their commercial infrastructure was intact. Carthage kept to the terms of the treaty after the Battle of Himera in 480 for 70 years. In 149, Carthage continually submitted to the ever harsher demands of the Roman consuls until they demanded Carthaginians to move to an inland location, ending their commercial activities. Only then did the Carthaginians decided to go down in flames. Dionysius kept all his conquests since 396 and further gained recognition of his dominion over the Sicils. He had little reason to continue the war. The armies of Dionysius had shrunk in size because of cash footage and he had been forced to pay off his mercenaries with land. Carthage had deeper pockets and fighting them may not have been cost-effective in the long run. Dionysius was not fighting a crusade to save Greek civilization from barbarians, peace with Carthage meant he could take on softer targets, especially Italian Greeks. Chapter 8 Aftermath Mago sailed back to Carthage after the treaty and the Carthaginian army was disbanded. Carthage launched no wars in the Mediterranean. Dionysius took bloodless possession of Tauromenium in 391, and replaced the Sicil population with his mercenaries. If Dionysius compensated Agiris for his crucial services, the details are not known. The Syracusan rebels joined Dionysius before the treaty was signed and he promptly returned the freed slaves to their masters. After settling his affairs in Sicily, Dionysius began a campaign against region in 390. He failed to take the city in 390 and 389 and finally succeeded in 387. Three years later, Again he started a war with Carthage that lasted until 375 and ended in his defeat at the Battle of Cronium. Chapter 9, Sources Caven, Brian. Dionysius I, Warlord of Sicily. Yale University Press. ISBN 0300045077. Church, Alfred J. Carthage. T. Fisher Unwin. Freeman, Edward, A. Sicily, Phoenician, Greek and Roman. 
T. Fisher Unwin. Freeman, Edward, A. History of Sicily. 4. Oxford Press. Kern, Paul B. Ancient Siege Warfare. Indiana University Publishers. ISBN 0253-33546-9. Lancel, Serge. Carthage, A History. Blackwell Publishers. ISBN 157718-1034. Worry, John. Warfare in the Classical World, an Illustrated Encyclopedia of Weapons, Warriors and Warfare in the Ancient Civilizations of Greece and Rome. New York, Barnes and Noble. ISBN 156619463-6.